Hello from London. I'm Peter Stewart. On Twitter, I'm Tweeter Stewart, T-W-E-T-E-R-S-T-E-W-A-R-T, with these short daily podcasts. Advice on inflection and projection and mic technique and voice care tips still to come, with exercises and anecdotes from, well, my career in TV and radio studios. Yeah, I've been a voice trainer for the BBC, for example, and I've hosted thousands of radio and TV shows and podcasts as well. We're looking at our resonators and... Our oral resonator, we're going to be coming to in a few days' time because then we can move uh, seamlessly from what that does into the articulation and how you make different sounds with your tongue and your teeth and your lips and so on. But this is what we know about the nose, another one of our uh, resonators. It's the, the nasal cavity, really, is, uh, is what it's called officially. It's the resonator which... As I mentioned yesterday, you're least able to manipulate. You can alter the, the amount of sounded air going through your nose in the first place, but you can't actually change what happens to it when it's there in the same way, obviously, that you can with your mouth and your lips and your tongue. Now, most people have no idea that much of their sound is affected by their nasal cavity. And if you want to check out the effect it has on your tone, close your mouth and say a long N sound n for november and gently hold a finger over each nostril and you find that you can't say it because of the amount of sounded air that is automatically or subconsciously rather than automatically being diverted through your nasal resonator Now, this cavity is also a much smaller area in which resonance can occur, obviously, when you compare it to your mouth. But even though it plays that small part in achieving the overall sound, its contribution is still important. I kind of mentioned this yesterday. If you think of a cooking recipe and the ingredients may include just a a pinch of this and a, a, a soupçon of something else, and you may be tempted to think that such a small amount would make no difference, but it does add to the overall flavour, and that's what the the nasal cavity does to your voice. Because of its structure, the nasal area helps with the higher pitched sounds. Remember we spoke about this before, about the size of the of the tunnel that you're in, for example, or the size of the instrument when you compare a trumpet to a trombone. It's the size of the passage, as well as other things like the material it's made up of and also the, uh, the, the different areas that the sound may travel through and also the size of the input and the size of the output parts of the instrument. But because of its structure, the nasal area helps with the higher-pitched sounds. And, and, and so when, when more sound is diverted through your nose rather than the oral space, the voice becomes higher as well. And there are two types of resonant disorders in this area. They're the similarly named hypernasal and hyponasal disorders. And we're going to be looking at those different forms of speech over the next couple of days here on our podcast. Get a better broadcast, podcast and video voice. Tell your friends about it as well. I'd love them to learn about what we're talking about here. And if you want to get in touch, drop me a line on Twitter. Tweeter Stewart, T-W-E-T-E-R-S-T-E-W-A-R-T. <laughs>